Hello, church. Hey, what a great service this morning. Good worship. Thank you, Pastor Jez, for all that love. And uh, yeah, it is my birthday tomorrow. And thank you for your messages today and in advance and everything. Well, actually, going to be truthful. We recorded this ahead of time because our amazing team is moving everything this weekend and we needed to record ahead of time. I'm in the auditorium, just me and the technician, and I'm preaching to the chairs. And I'm not used to this. I'm used to heckling. I'm used to cheering. I'm used to people, you know, bouncing off the people. So I'm going to bounce off the chairs, the camera and the technician, and I'm going to trust you at home. You're going to engage and you're going to send a lot of bouncing back, heckling and love and cheering for me today as we look at our series, The Soundtrack of Summer. Pastor Mel did so good, so good, so well kicking this off last week, didn't she? It was an amazing one. Hey, complain up, look up, praise up. Simple points, but profound and powerful when we live this through the Psalms. And, uh, and this is a great series, and we want you to engage in this and get ready, get your Bibles ready. We're in the book of Psalms, which is a Hebrew soundtrack to praise. And I remember, you know, when I was growing up, listening to songs on the radio during the summer break. That's right. I know. I said radio didn't I? I mean, last week, here's Mel with her cassette tapes. Some of you watching this don't even know what a cassette tape is. I bet you don't even know what a radio is. Well, here's one for you. I couldn't even find it on eBay to bring this morning. I wanted to bring an eight-track tape. Chris, do you know what an eight-track tape is? I, I, uh, my very first car, I put an eight-track tape player in there, and I couldn't get one to bring this morning. So I'll just talk about the radio. The, you know, radio. When I was growing up, no CDs. Mel, we didn't have CDs. We didn't have cassettes. Uh, no iPods. No smartphones with Spotify. Um, we had to listen to everything on vinyl. All right, boomers, you know what I'm talking about. 45s are long plays. And we'd listen on vinyl or the radio station. Can you guys imagine carrying the big radio around with it? No, I'm sure you can't. Boomers, you, you can identify. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I kind of want to do this. And I'm going to, Chris, I'm going to use you right now. We're going to do Name That Tune. Because what would happen, the DJ during the summer weeks would play the tunes on the radio to make us happy. And they were summer tunes. And so we're going to have name that tune. So I'm going to say the first uh, few lines, and you get to guess what it is. Murray Maskey online. We do this all the time together. You're going to guess these songs. I got four of them for you. Here's the first one. Goes like this: See the curtains hanging in the window in the evening on a Friday night. A little light, a shining through the window, lets me know everything's all right. Next line tells you the song. No, Chris. I didn't think so. I don't even sure your daddy would know this one, Chris. Summer breeze makes me feel fine, blowing through the jasmine in my mind. Seals and Croft, 1972. Now, here's the next one. Now, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just bringing the message on this, but in all actuality, in the early 70s, it was one of my favorite bands. Don't shoot me. But here it goes. Here's the words, and then you get to guess the song. Chris, try again. Well, we got no choice, all the girls and boys making all that noise because they found new ways, because they found new toys. Well, we can't salute you, can't find a flag. If that don't suit you, that's a drag. No more pencils, no more books, no more teachers' dirty looks. Well, we got no class, we got no principles, we got no intelligence. We can't even think of a word that rhymes. Next line, Chris, any idea? No, I didn't think so. School's out for summer. That's the name of the soundtrack. School's out forever. Alice Cooper, 1972. I'm sorry, but it was one of my favorites. Anyway, everybody's got to know this one. Chris, if you don't know this one, we're going to have an education lesson after this recording. I mean, this is for all the rock fans throughout time. So it starts like this. There's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold, and she's buying a, Chris? Oh, come on. We're having class afterwards. She's buying a stairway to heaven. You ever heard of stairway to heaven? Led Zeppelin. Who has not heard that one? All right. Chris, you're an Aussie, right? This is an Aussie band. And if you don't get this one, you're going to have to move to New Zealand. All right? And here it goes. 
I know your eyes in the morning sun. I feel, your touch, I feel you touch me in the pouring rain. And the moment that you wander far from me, I want to feel you in my arms again. And you come to me on a summer breeze. Keep me warm in your love. Then you softly leave. And it's me you need to show. What's the next line, Christian O? Oh, you're moving to New Zealand, mate. That's it. You and Earl, off you go. Kiwi land. Well, they're adopted Aussies. The Bee Gees. How deep is your love? You don't even know who they are. Okay, 1977, enough of that. Anyway, hey, those songs made you feel good. Um, you're kind of out of the wintertime, out of the cold, out of the bleakness and the dark skies. You're at the beach, you know, at the pool, hanging with your friends. The songs made us relax, unwind, enjoy life. And in a way, though, they lulled us into a semi-sleep. And for a moment, they helped us to forget the realities of life that we were facing, hardship, suffering, opposition, whatever. And while the soundtracks of summer made us feel good, they couldn't give us the strength to make it through the tough times. But there is a soundtrack throughout the book of Psalms that while the Psalms are positive, they also face the realities of life. As Pastor Mel said last week, they give us hope and strength we need to keep singing and making it through. And I'm going to take you today to my favorite psalm. We're going to go to this one. I go back to this psalm time and time again. Every year, at least two, if not three times a year, I will do a journey through all the psalms. And I'll do it in different versions, and I'll read them over and over, and I'll think about them. And, and I'm, I, my daughter would say probably it's my, my OCD coming out. Um, not ACD, OCD coming out. I, I, I do best when I repeat things and I do it over and over again. And, and, and because if I repeat it, I remember it. If I remember it, then it becomes second nature to me. And so I go through this psalm time and time again. And maybe you need to do that. Maybe the world's pressing in on you and it's getting dark or it's cold or it's been tough. Listen, get into these songs, get into these soundtracks again and again. And again, so that when your mind is kind of in neutral, the Word of God just kicks into gear. And I'm going to take you to my favorite one today. It's a song of security. It's a song of reality. It's a song of praise. It's Psalm 84. Pastor Nate likes this one because that's the year he was born, 1984, Psalm 84. So I beat you to it, Nate. I don't know if you're going to preach on this one, but I got it. I'm second in, so I got it. Turn in your Bible to Psalm 84. Let me give you some background as you're going there. Uh, This psalm was written by the sons of Korah. If you don't know who Korah was, Korah was the the great grandson of Levi, Levi, the Levitical priests. And the sons of Korah were Levitical singers that David put in charge over the worship at the tabernacle. And, And so here you go. Psalm 84 is a Hebrew soundtrack. How about that? And this psalm sings about an incredible journey, a journey that gives us security while facing reality. And we end up praising God for the strength that we get through it all. And it actually ends with a phrase at the end of this psalm, blessed is the man, blessed is the person who trusts in you, God. Now, I need to let you know before we do this, that this psalm actually makes it clear that this incredible journey is both wonderful and painful. And this, some would say, well, that's an oxymoron. How can it be wonderful and how can it be painful? It's not an oxymoron. It's a paradox. They wrestle in tension together. They're truths that sit side by side and both are powerful and yet they're real and they're true. And, and so the psalmist here does not leave us with rose-colored glasses, um, you know, so that we look at everything and go, oh, the world is just wonderful and nothing wrong happens. And he doesn't leave us with the idea that everything will always be good for us because we are God's kids. Very real. But he does present us with the truth that we're still able to hope, to praise, and to progress no matter what comes our way if we stick to this soundtrack. Are you ready? Psalm 84. Just going to read the first seven verses. It'll be on the screen for you. If you don't have a Bible with you, I'm reading from the NIV. So verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart, my flesh cry out for the living God. I have a passion. I have a desire to be in the presence of God, both physically and and emotionally. I want to be in the presence of God. Verse 3. 
even the sparrow has found a home. Now, if you think back in the scriptures, a sparrow symbolizes little worth. Jesus said, you can buy two with a penny. They're not worth a lot. And yet they found a home. And the swallow builds her nest there. And the swallow in the Bible symbolizes restlessness. So you've got the sparrow who has little value, and yet they're at home in the house of God. You've got the, the, the swallow who symbolizes restlessness, flitting here, flitting there, can't sit still, yet she has built a home in the presence of God. And it says where she may have her young, a place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. And then he puts this interlude in, Selah. It's difficult to define that word because we're not Hebrew and we don't totally understand it. But the best explanation of Selah means that this is a break. This is an interlude. This is a time to pause, reflect, talk about this. It's a break in the song, if you like. In his presence, stop think, talk about it together of everything that was just said. Because everything that was just said tells us that this soundtrack, as we sing it, we can have hope in a hopeless world. And this is the first point. The soundtrack of Psalm 84 says, you can have hope in a hopeless world. There is a place of rest. There is a place of security. It's a place where we belong. It's a place where trust is possible, and it is powerful. That place is none other than the house of God. You take your Bible, you turn it into Psalm 84, and you read this. I mean, I do it a number of times a year, time and time again, and all of a sudden, those moments of hopelessness just begin to fade because I am secure in the house of God. Notice that the psalmist speaks about one of the smallest, seemingly most insignificant in the animal kingdom, the sparrow and the swallow. Why didn't he say a lion? Why didn't he say a bear? Why didn't he say, I love the tiger. Why didn't he say the tiger is there? He's the smallest, most insignificant. They have found a home close to God, and they even make it a place for their young. Now, I don't want to read too much into that phrase where she can make a place for her young. However... Listen, get this revelation. It suggests that we can have confidence in bringing up children when we bring them up in the house of God. In this day and age where so many choose to not follow the Lord, this scripture gives us hope as parents. And you know, as parents, you wonder, are my kids going to follow God? Are my kids going to love God? Are my kids going to have faith in God? Listen, if you have a child who has wandered from the faith, hang on to the promises of God. They are yes and amen. They are true. They are foundational. And, and this word says that even the most insignificant, smallest of creatures has found a home there and even a place to raise her young. Raise your young in the house of God and stand on the promises of God that they will know him and love him. And, and it doesn't matter how unimportant you might think you are. I'm just small. I'm a little nobody in the kingdom. I'm not a lion. I'm not a leader. Listen, you can have home, a home in the house of God. Let me ask you a question. Where does this scripture say the nest of the swallow is at? Right near the altar. She builds her nest close to the altar. You know what that tells us? It tells us that our home in God's house is made possible through sacrifice. That's what it says. This is where offerings and sacrifices are made. And because, because of that, because God has made a sacrifice through His Son at the cross, we have a home, a secure home in the house of God. Our sins have been forgiven. We have been accepted into his family. We are secure. We are at home in his presence. Listen, our hope is in the cross. Right here is the shadow of the cross, the altar of God, the altar where Jesus gave his life. Can I say to you today, stay close to the cross where mercy and grace flow from. The Bible says that His mercies are new every morning. It tells us that His grace is free. You know what mercy is? Mercy doesn't give us what we deserve. And grace gives us what we don't deserve. Let me explain that. I deserve judgment. I deserve separation from God. I deserve 
punishment. I deserve to pay for my sins. But because of his great mercies that are new every morning, I don't get what I deserve. Instead, his grace steps in, bang, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift. Grace gives us what we don't deserve. I don't deserve heaven. I don't deserve to be a child of God. I don't deserve to be at home in the house of God. But grace gives it to me as a gift. Stay close to the cross. Not only do we have hope of security in God's house, we should expect to be blessed as the Father's child. Now, Pastor Mel talked about this last week about being blessed. And the deal is this. His blessings that you find throughout the Psalms, His blessings are greater than any opposition, any curse, any circumstance that you're going to face. And, and this is a time. Selah. Pause. Reflect. Talk. It's a time to look back and thank God for His blessings. You go, what blessings? 2020 sucked. It was horrible. What bless you're alive. You're healthy. You're strong. You are provided for. You live in a great nation. Uh, you've got people around you who love you. Thank God for the blessings that he has given to you. He has given you a home. But it's also a time to look ahead and exercise hope in the truth that he's going to continue to bless his children. Verse 5. Drop down to verse 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. You know, this soundtrack doesn't just give us hope in a hopeless world, but this soundtrack also tells us we can have strength along the road of life. That's point number two. We have strength as we live this life. We're not just found in the house of God. This scripture tells us we're actually in God. I don't just kind of find a little corner or a nook or even a little room I can live in, in God's house. I'm actually in Him. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. We're not attached to God. We're actually in God. Paul made that clear on Mars Hill that day in Acts chapter 17. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Because in Christ is a favorite truth that Paul focused on. And that's something that gives us strength. And he used it 27 times in the book of Ephesians alone. Being in Christ is about being secure, but not just being secure. It's also about being strong. We, get, we gain our strength. We get empowered. He also said in Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ. And he literally said it this way, who is constantly empowering me. Why? Because I'm in him. And in him I find my strength power for living a blessed life. It's not found in an ideal. It's not found in religion. It's not found in philosophy or a political ideology. Listen, the government can't give you strength. It can't give you hope. Our strength is in a person, Jesus Christ. His way of life, His Word, His presence empowers us day by day. I am empowered through Christ who strengthens me. Paul, uh, the writer, the sons of Korah here said, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. We have made a decision to be in Him, to walk with Him, to move forward with Him. I, I was thinking the other day, we, we had this party, a street party for Christmas, first time ever in our neighborhood, and I'm watching my neighbors. I'm, I don't think any of them, you know, are, are believers. And I'm watching them and I'm watching how they carry their life and the things they're doing and the things that they're saying. And I thought, gee, what would it be like to not be a Christian? Have you ever th had that thought? What would life be like if I never decided to follow Jesus Christ? If I don't want to be in him, what would life be like? Now, I'm not casting judgment on our neighborhood and our neighbors and everything. I'm just saying, look at the people around you and you go, gee, what would life? And in some ways you go, gee, it'd be easy because you're like everybody else. You just follow the crowd. You flow with the tide. But it's not easy because there's no hope and strength beyond the things of today. This is an incredible journey. He says, blessed are those who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. It's an incredible journey. 
It's a decision of the heart. It's a choice to be in him and not stand still and not go backwards or not just place your hope in the material things around you. We have set our hearts on walking with him through life every step of the way. I've been doing this now for well over 45 years, and I'm telling you, it's an incredible journey. The promise is an extraordinary strength, a supernatural strength beyond your own. I, I couldn't love uh, the way people need to be loved without His strength. I couldn't forgive. I couldn't overcome. I couldn't do the things that God has wanted me to do without His strength. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Set their hearts on pilgrimage. Be ready to journey together, because it's an incredible journey. But as I said earlier, it's not just a journey that's incredible and wonderful. It's also a journey that's got some pain in it, because verse 6 brings us into this reality. He says, you're walking the walk. You're taking a trip. It's called life. And sometimes in this journey of life, you're going to hit some hardship. You're going you're to have some opposition. You're going you're to face trouble and difficulty. What happens when you do that? Verse 6 says, as they pass through the valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. It's easy to read over that quickly and miss the point that the psalmist is making. But this soundtrack not only tells us there's hope in a hopeless world, and it not only tells us there's strength throughout the journey, but it also says this, we are going through, not staying in. We're not stuck. We're not going backwards. We're not stopping in this valley. We're going through it. Even David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say I camp in it. He didn't say I stay in it. I live in it. I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death. And here he's, the, the sons of Korah are building on this and saying, we're going through the valley of Baca. Baca was a hard place, a dry place, a place of weeping. It was so barren that people would weep in that place. They didn't go there to camp out and sit around a fire and sing Kumbaya. You know, that wasn't their soundtrack. And I need to say to you today, reality is this. Christianity is not for the faint-hearted. It's a real journey with difficulties along the way. We pray for things sometimes, and they don't materialize when we want them or how we want them. We ask God to do things, and those things don't always come to be in this time. And we go, God, where are you? As you heard last week, God, where are you? And just because we are God's children and we're blessed by Him, and we've decided to walk with Him, doesn't mean that we are exempt from the hardships of life. We go through valleys. We go through hard times, weeping times. We cry out to God, and it feels like the heavens are brass. He's just not listening. And I know people don't want to hear this in this day and age where we want a comfortable Christian life. We want everything to go our way. We want to live the blessed life, your best life now. And people want a feel-good faith, one that's more defined by the spirit of the age rather than the word of God. Make no pretenses about this. God never says you will not have hardship. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And you can overcome the world. We don't go through this valley alone. The journey is just what it says it is. It's a journey, but here's what it says. They pass through. Won't you go back and mark how many times the Bible here talks about those people, they. It, this is not a solo soundtrack, by the way. This is not something you sing alone. We don't go through the valley alone. Others have passed this way before us, and many are walking with us. We pass through together. We sing this song together. This song is best sung together. The Psalms were meant to be sung together not as a solo. I know right now in our world, self-isolation is a big topic. And I don't want to get political and I don't want to talk about that. And I understand it's necessary if you've been tested for the virus. However, however, continued isolation can be dangerous. Listen to me. So many of us, and I include myself in this, disconnect from others when we're going through a tough time. We hide out, we hibernate, we go under the bed, so to speak, and just stay away from people. And, and that's dangerous. Don't do that. You'll become a target for depression and hopelessness and despair. Connect, share, 
Strengthen each other along the road. Sing the soundtrack of praise together. There's so much to praise God with. There's power in praise together. He says this. There's no stopping in the valley. And even though this trip has challenges, opposition, difficulty, we have the ability, listen, to turn these times into a time of refreshing and strength. As they, as you, me, as we're passing through the valley, watch this next phrase, they make it a place of springs. Not God makes it a place of springs. They, you, me, us, together, make it a place of springs. Let me read it to you, verse 6, first part of verse 6 in the Passion Translation. I really like the way Brian Simmons puts it. It'll be on the screen for you in the Passion Translation. Even when their paths wind through dark valleys of tears, they dig deep to find a pleasant pool where others only find pain. You know what the blessed life is? Finding the water, finding the refreshing. Other people can only find pain because they're in despair. They have no hope. Listen, I, I, I don't like kind of focusing on this, but I need to tell you, I have done funerals before of people who died of an overdose. I have watched their friends throw themselves on the casket as as it's being lowered into the grave. They're in total despair. They're despondent. They're they're hopeless. I'm telling you the Word of God here says we have the ability to dig deep. We can find refreshment where other people only have pain. Why? Because, here it comes, there is a river within us. Got it? There is a river within us and among us. Not only are we in him, he is in us. God lives within each one of us by his spirit, and that spirit creates a river of life. This is what Jesus said in the Gospel of John. Within you there are streams of living water. And when we go through these tough times, just go deep. Go into that stream. Don't isolate. Swim. Swim in the river. And you're not on your own working this out. The song says, not only are you digging deep, finding that river, but it says there's a partnership with God who's working for you. Isn't it amazing how many times, you know, you're just feeling down. You just had a bad day or you got a bad report from the doctor or the tax agent or whatever, and and you're down and somebody comes along with a word of encouragement or somebody comes along with a scripture or somebody comes along even with just a coffee and says, hey, let's talk. I'm telling you, God has this way of sending rain in the time of dryness. Listen to what chapter, uh, verse 6, the second part says. The autumn rains cover it with pools. He said, even in the dry place, God will send the rain. Brian um, puts it this way in the, in the Passion Translation. Brian Simmons, he said this, verse 6, second part. He, God, gives them a brook of blessing filled from the rain of an outpouring. God will pour out rain in your dry times. Stay there. Dig deep. Keep moving. Dig deep when you're going through a tough time. You'll find a spring of living water. You'll find life. You'll find strength to keep moving through this. And you will find that God is sending the rain to you and for you. Because of that, you will go. It says this in verse 7, from strength to strength. They will. Not just me. Not just you. Together we will go from strength to strength. You know, the, uh, the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche said, that which doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Now, some of you know Kelly Clarkson, 2011. Gee, that seems like forever, doesn't it? Ten years ago. She popularized that phrase in the song. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. You know what? They're just picking up on this right here in Scripture. We not only turn these times Uh, into times where we we turn to God and we pray and we worship and we praise Him, but we use these barren, dry times to grow stronger and become more like Him. This is the oddness of God. We can take opposition and we can turn it into strength. We can take dryness and we can turn it into a river. We can take despair and we can turn it into hope. Why? Because we're getting stronger. We use these things not to take us out, but to take us up and to build us up. And this is the beauty and the power of our faith in Him. This is really what it means they are blessed. 
because they trust in you. They know that all things will work together for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. How long is this going to go for? It says at the end of verse 7, till each one of them appears before God and Zion, until we're finally at home with him. You know, the difference is, in the Old Testament, the Jews were on a journey to get to the presence of God. The difference today in the New Testament is we are on a journey in and with the presence of God. He is with us. He is in us. He is strengthening us. He is refreshing us. He is empowering us. Even though we go through a valley, we go from strength to strength. You know, for so many people, last year was a it was a bad year, and I think some people, you hear people on television and you hear people around the street say, oh, I'm so glad it's 2021. The clock changed, therefore, everything, all that bad stuff's gone away. Let's just forget last year and start over again. It didn't happen. It's still here. But I'll tell you what does happen. We can get stronger. We can become bigger. We can run faster. We can become more like Him in spite of this. And sometimes even because of this, it will strengthen us and make us stronger. And whatever your year has been like, it's now in the past. But what is your year this year going to be like? I love what Pastor Mel spoke about last week. The soundtrack you listen to in secret becomes the life you live in public. What kind of soundtrack are you listening to? Are you listening to the praise? Blessed are those whose trust in you, who set their hearts on a pilgrimage. They will go from strength to strength. And even though they go through a hard place, a dry place, a, a, a barren place, they will go through it together and they will find a river and they will know your blessings and they will come out stronger than ever before. I want to pray for you right now. I, I kind of believe that, you know, to me, this is kind of like, it, I read this over and over again because it's the will of God for each one of his children to go from strength to strength. He doesn't want us to go from strength to weakness, but from strength to strength. And I want to pray for you that you will go from strength to strength, that this soundtrack of summer, particularly the ones you find in Psalms and Psalm 84, that it will strengthen you as you begin to get revelation, as you begin to walk with him. Let me pray for you right now because some of you have been facing some hopeless situations. Some of you, life has just become too tough. Some of you feel like you're stuck in the valley. And I believe God wants to walk with you through that valley. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Can I pray for you right now? Father, I, I think that people watching this who've even contemplated suicide, life just gets so tough, they think the only thing to do is to end life. Father, your promise is you came to give life abundantly. The enemy came to steal it, but you came to give it abundantly. And regardless of the circumstances that make us feel like, we're in a dead place. God, deep within, when we know you, there's a river, there's life. There's abundance of life flowing. The enemy comes to just rob and to steal and to kill and to destroy. I just want to take authority over that right now because that death wish doesn't come from you. That way of escape is not your way. So, Father, I just pray right now, release in their heart and their mind. This, this whole song began with those who set their hearts on pilgrimage, those whose soul longs for the presence of God. I pray a fresh longing for you and for your presence. God, maybe they've even done things that make them feel unworthy or insignificant. God, I pray the, that they will get revelation right now of the incredible value you placed on each one of them when you gave your son at the cross. Father, I pray they'll return to the foot of the cross where everything was paid for and they're brought home to you. Father, release them. Give them freedom right now so that they can go from strength to strength. This is a moment of freedom from depression, from despair, even from suicidal thoughts. Freedom for life and strength in Jesus' name. And God, for those who have faced situations that they can't see a way through, the valley is dark, it is deep, and it seems long. Your word tells us that you give us, you are a light 
unto our path. I pray your light shine in them, through them, and on them right now in ways they couldn't even engineer. God, you give them light and the life that you have. You are the light of men, your word says. So Holy Spirit, flood their soul, their thoughts, their mind, their heart right now with your life. And Father, I pray for those who uh, have never come to the place of truly trusting you and your sacrifice and giving your son at the cross. I pray that this moment, Holy Spirit, do what you do best. Draw them to the Father who loves them passionately, who gave his son as a sacrifice. And Father, I pray that they turn to you and to your gift of eternal life through your son. Hey, if you've never done that before, why not now? Why not you? Why not in this moment? God doesn't hold back. He doesn't wait. He gave his one and only son that those who would believe in him, trust in him, might not perish, might not die, but live forever. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The word of God says that if you will confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. What does that mean? Believe he is who he said that he is. He is the son of God. He is the savior of the world. Believe what he did. He did for you and for me. He died on a cross to pay for our sins so we could come home to the father. Confess that with your mouth. Believe in your heart. He is not dead. He's not in a grave. He is alive forevermore. And because he lives, we live also. It's very easy. Acknowledge, believe, confess, and trust. And you can turn to him. If you're doing that right now, on the screen, there'll be a little icon you can press. We've got pastors that are ready to connect with you, help you into this journey because it really is an incredible journey where you can go from strength to strength. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman whose trust is in the Lord God Almighty. Hey, I trust that this will be a great summer for you as you sing the soundtrack of His Word of praise and strength and breakthrough and presence that you come to know Him in a deeper way. Hey, bless you this week. Have a great week. We will see some of you at our venue next week. We're looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. Have a great week, guys.